Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, So That's How You Do That. I'm Joe Lutender and today I wanna to talk to you about tools. Now, one of the big mistakes that people make is just because the big box store sells it, they think that it's quality. That's not true. For example, this tapping block, this thing is about as worthless as it can come. It doesn't work, it's not gonna work for you, it's only gonna cause you pain and agony when you need to try to get a plank together and you can't because you're trying to use that. So I'm gonna share with you these tools, how to use them in, the, in some different situations. And I'm gonna also share with you where you can go and get these tools for a good price. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So you can see I have a table full, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is a tapping block. This is one of the most important tools that you can get that is gonna help you with your vinyl plank installation. And it's one that you don't want to get the wrong kind. It's always nice to have a good tapping block to be able to put your plank together, to be able to get those joints to go together a lot easier. You wanna just go lightly, keeping one end on the plank and just come and swing it out lightly. And the thing that's nice with the little more heavy duty tapping block is you don't have to beat on the plank too much for it to work. You're not all plank can just go together by using your hands. A lot of it needs a little bit of help and you want to have something like this. What's nice about this is that you can be very delicate with this and you can also be very brutal with it, meaning you can use a lot of brute force. All right, so after you do like two, three rows, you wanna just take a scrap piece and your tapping block and you just wanna hit these together just to make sure everything is staying tight. Just give it a couple good whacks. And that's just gonna kind of force anything together just in case something maybe slipped out of joint a little bit. Gets everything to lay flat. Now with this particular one, like I was telling you, this one is like weighs like a couple pieces of paper almost. You can hear the difference. Okay, even with this one. So using something like this is, to me it's, it's not even it's not worth it at all. I mean, I can't believe they even sell this and get away with it, honestly. It's only gonna bring you frustration. If you have a plank that doesn't wanna go together, this is not gonna get the job done. You're just gonna get super frustrated and it's gonna make you wanna quit. This is really easy to use. It has the handle on it. And like I said, you can be delicate or use brute force with it. You just use a scrap piece that you cut and slide it in there and use the tapping block to beat on the scrap piece, that's gonna save your plank. It's gonna help you protect your locking system and not let it break. Cause some of these are brittle. Some of them are tougher than others too. Now this is made by Bullet Tools. This is something that I've been using for several years now. This is made in America, okay? There is a different tapping block that's very similar to it. And I found this because a lot of people are asking me if this is any good. And they also sell this on Amazon. This is made by Neku. Ne it's a good tapping block and it's a lot less expensive than this one. So really when it comes down to which one do you choose, is one better than the other? I think that they're both really good tapping blocks and it just depends. Do you want one that's made in America or China? Completely up to you. Both are gonna get the job done. I'd get one of them, okay? This is not the tool that you want to cheap out on. This is the tool that you really want to make sure that you get to be able to help you with that vinyl plank installation. Now I want to talk to you about pull bars, another super important tool. So this is the next thing that I would tell you I would not cheap out on. Now, a lot of those pull bars that they sell at the big box stores, they're just cheap and flimsy, almost like they're made out of tin. You hit them a couple times hard and they bend. So they're absolutely worthless. Like this one has a knuckle on the end of it. So you can really hit hard with a hammer, a rubber mallet, or a dead blow hammer on that knuckle to get some good force. And now this is something that you use along walls where you're putting in that last row or along cabinets where you can't get in with your tapping block. That's when you use the pull bar. Because 
too hard to get in there. You need to kind of lift it up a little bit to get it to lock in, but you really can't. So you just, using a pull bar is, is the way to get in these tight areas. There's also situations where maybe get a few rows in, for example, and there's a gap in the floor that you missed. This is where the pull bar comes in, so you can hit that and close those gaps up if you miss something, okay? So the pull bar is something that you don't want to cheap out on. Now, I have three different pull bars here, so I want to tell you what the difference is. Now, this is made by Bullet Tools or Marshalltown. They bought out Bullet Tools. This is really a good heavy-duty pull bar that I've used for several years. You've seen me use this in a lot of my videos. Recently, I came across this pull bar, which is made by Norski. This is one that you're going to see me use in some more videos here. I like this pull bar. And honestly, this one's cheaper. And it's made in Canada. What I really like about it is it has a wider mouth on it to really get some more grip on top of the plank. So you can not worry about damaging it if you have to really hit it. It has the knuckle here that's more at an angle which might make it a little easier to hit, okay? This is really a good, heavy, solid steel, welded really good, just like this one. This one's cheaper, okay? I'm gonna have a link for both of them. If you're doing like a three quarter inch solid, I'd probably lean more towards this because the lip on this is actually a little bit deeper versus this one. So a three quarter inch solid, Laminate and vinyl plank, this works great. Laminate and vinyl plank, perfect, okay? And it's cheaper. Now this is the other one that I talk about and have recommended a lot. You haven't seen me use this because this one's a little more difficult to find. And it's cheaper than both of these, but this is called the crane knucklehead. Really a good pull bar. It is solid and heavy duty, not quite as heavy as these other two, but this is like one solid piece of steel that they bent and then they welded right here. This thing works really good too. It also has that nice lip on there to be able to hook on to vinyl plank and laminate. Out of these three, this one's quickly becoming my favorite, just so you know. So whichever one you choose, check them out. I will put links for all these tools below. Actually, there'll be a link for my tools page. You'll click on that and you can go to my website and you'll see all these tools. So now I have this big dead blow hammer here that I want to talk to you about that you've probably seen me use in some of my videos. This is something that I have because I use this for other things like when I install three quarter inch solid wood. This is what I use to hit my, beat my wood into place while we're doing the install. I also use this for my nail gun, my staple gun that I'm using when I'm stapling that three quarter inch solid down and then I use it for my vinyl plank installations when I have, especially when I have a drop and lock. Now it's all down flat, this is lined up right. Now I just take my mallet and hit that in. Okay, one of the things that you can have a problem with is hitting these joints down on these drop and locks and this part breaking. So what you can do, is get that in place and then take a scrap piece, stick it in there. Once you get this in there correctly, and it's all locked in, now this will be perfectly lined up. Now just take your mallet and hit that down and it should go down there perfectly without any problems. I also use this for when I'm hitting my pull bar, okay? It's better than using a hammer because a hammer, you know, smaller hammers don't have as much force as something like this because you get a lot of weight behind a dead blow. Plus, it's not going to make a big tinging noise and make you deaf. But a lot of people ask me about these, okay? So I do have a link for this so you can check it out if you want to get one. There are other options. You don't have to get this behemoth thing okay you can go with something a little smaller this is something that i found on amazon for a kit that comes with these two it's pretty well priced and it actually comes with both of these okay this thing will work just fine for hitting this if you need a little more force this is a little more beefy okay 
This you can use to the soft side. It has a hard side. You can use the soft side for when you're doing, hitting your joints together on your dropping locks. And then you can use the hard side when you're hitting the pull bar, okay? It does have two pins in here, two pins that are holding this in. It's not just the one like normal. So I do believe that this thing is gonna work pretty good for you. I beat on it a little bit. This isn't too old. I haven't put too much work into using this, but it does feel and seem like a good one. I've ordered a few of these now and hit them pretty hard and the head popped off and broke, especially on the rubber mallet. So I'm just showing you this is, and I'll leave a link for this. This is one that you can get that's actually gonna work for you, okay? There's so many options out there. I just wanted to give you something that you could go with. Um, and then of course, like I said, I'll leave a link for the big boy, the one that's my baby. These spacers are different than any spacer that I've ever found. And these have been around for a while and I just found them probably a year ago. What I really like about these is that they're adjustable. They sit on the plank and they don't fall over. This spacer is adjustable. Really quick and easy to use. You just slide it in there, push it in. No matter how hard I push, it's gonna stay on there. It's not gonna fold in like this down here. And so you can see this piece is solid now. And if I needed to adjust, I just turn it. They're nice and solid, they work really well. I like how they adjust so that if you have, if you cut your plank a little crooked or if you have a wave in the wall, you can adjust it accordingly to the gap. These things work really good. The thing that I use these most for is like when I'm coming out of a hallway into another room, like a bedroom or a bathroom or some other area where I'm starting that first row. These things work really well in those situations and I love using these. And I wish that I would have found these a lot sooner. And that's why I'm sharing them with you. So now to keep it straight, I'm just gonna attach another plank on here. sure that if you have a weak locking system that breaks easy you use a scrap and then just you put the scrap on there and hit that into place. Now we want to put some spacers in here to hold this in place. As you've seen through this video these spacers are really handy. Actually they're absolutely incredible. I love using these things. These things are worth every penny guys. Um, they come in a box of four. The link that I'm going to share with you below, when you click on it, you're going to get two boxes of them and there's eight of them total. So four in each box, you'll get two boxes. Now, with that being said, a lot of the vinyl plank installations, you can get away with using probably eight of them because you can, once you're done with an area, you can pick them up and go move them somewhere else. Okay. But if you have a plank installation that has really long walls, you might want to consider going with 12 of them or three boxes. These things, absolutely incredible. I did a video on these, just about these. So I'll also leave a link below for that if you want to check it out. Okay, so now if you are on a concrete slab, this glue gun right here is what I like to use where I secure the scrap pieces I was telling you about when I leave that first row out. I'll use this glue that you can get with this glue gun to secure those scrap pieces to the floor because this glue, which I'll talk about soon, sticks to concrete. Now, if you're on a wood subfloor, you could just stick this down and then put a screw right through it. So I, again, I like to leave the first row out because it really makes getting started with an installation simple, especially for somebody who's never done this before. Having to deal with the plank moving on you or cutting in walls, also cutting around vents, just doing all the things you need to do to get started can really be challenging as it is. And this really simplifies it by starting with leaving the first row out and then coming back in and putting this row in later, which you can see how simple it is to do this. I just really think this is the easiest way to do it for a beginner. And I think that you should try it and you'll like it. Well, this is a special type of glue gun to heat up these sticks. This is a 200 watt glue gun. It heats up to a few hundred degrees. 
it really melts these glue sticks fast because you're going to need it to be so that you can constantly squeeze it when you need to. You can also use this to help you with securing transitions. Now this gives you more of an immediate tack so that you can use this as a helper with like construction adhesive that takes forever to dry. You can put a little bit of this down in, in different spots where you're securing down a transition and then use construction adhesive in the other areas. And then you can not have to worry about weighing it down. It gives you immediate tack, an immediate tack so that you don't have to sit there and worry about it moving on you. And it's special glue sticks. I'll show you what those are. I'll leave a link. So I can kind of put those in between these then. And do the same thing, make a mountain. So now I'll just take my T mold slide it where it needs to go. These bend a little bit so I can bend it to get it underneath. And then just kind of straighten it out a little bit. Hold it down. And then it also will be good for like doing stairs when you're doing stairs. I'm not saying only use this, use another adhesive with it, but this is what's gonna tack it down. So you don't have to use nails basically, right? Is what I'm saying. Um, so this works really well. This is the glue sticks that you need to use with this glue gun. Now you can't get these at Walmart. You can't get these at the big box stores. This is a specialty item. I will have a link where you can get them and they usually don't run out of stock on them. It's called Flex 180. This sticks to concrete, plastic, it sticks to all different things. So that's unique to it compared to like the glue sticks you use for crafts, right? So this is really a good item. If you have a concrete slab, this is really the way to go. I'm just telling you, if you want to make your job a lot easier between this, the glue gun and these spacers, especially with the concrete slab, definitely the way that you'd want to go to make your install a lot easier. Now these are three different shears that you can buy to help you with cutting your plank. Now I'm not going to go through great detail of these because I'm putting out another video here right after this one on how these work and which ones are good. But you can see I have three different kinds here. This particular one is good for a thinner vinyl plank. This one works with any, any thickness of vinyl plank. It also um, works good for laminate and even engineered wood. This one is the beast of them all. Not only does it cut the short part of the plank, but you can also do rip cuts with it down the length of the plank, and you can also do notch cutting with this. This thing takes away the need for any type of other saw. Now, I still think that you need a jigsaw, but this thing, this is a beast, a beast. And I'm gonna show you in another video all about these. Now, these are tools that you don't have to get, these are kind of beneficial tools to have. Realistically, for cutting vinyl plank, a jigsaw will work on just about anything. But when you do get into some of those stone cores, which a lot of the plank have gone to so far are nowadays, this is the, is the ticket, guys. Yeah, it costs a little bit of money, but well worth it. Now, I promise you, if you're doing a big installation, your knees are probably going to get pretty sore. If you're wondering about a pair of knee pads, these are called pro knees. Now, the foam inside here is an inch thick. Okay, these are what I wear. Whenever I'm doing hard surface, any sort of hard surface, if I'm doing a carpet, I switch to a different kind because on a soft surface, my leg tends to come off. But on any hard surface, I sit in these nice and solid. They feel really good. With the straps on, I crisscross them in the back. These things never come off or never fall down on me. They fit on really nice. And when you're kneeling on the ground on them, they fit nice and solid to the floor. They have this flat surface here, so they fit really good to the floor. Now, the thing that's nice about these is they're completely rebuildable. Now, these are about 90 bucks but it will be the last pair of knee pads you ever buy. I use these for everything, not just for installing flooring. I use these when I'm working on the car. Anything that I need to be outside work doing, being on my knees, I wear these. Yard work, these are always on. And the reason why is because I've had, 
I've had a total knee replacement, guys, and I can get down on my knees with these knee pads and, and I feel great with them. It doesn't hurt at all. It protects my kneecap. If anybody has had a knee replacement out there, which I know a lot of you have, you know that you want to protect that kneecap because they put that ball behind it or whatever it is that makes your kneecap track. My knees fit in this perfectly. It doesn't bother my kneecap at all. These things are absolutely incredible. Best pair of knee pads I've ever had. And they're completely rebuildable. Anything that's on here, if it broke or wore out, you can order that part and replace it. Super easy. They have videos to do all of that. And so that's what I do and a lot of installers out there do. Um, use these, okay? Pro knees are by far the trade's choice for knee pads. So check these out. I will put a link below for these. Back savers too, guys, back savers. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about is this knife right here. This seems kinda of ridiculous, right? But I use this for everything. I'm sure you've seen it in my videos. I know you have if you've watched any of my videos. I use this thing for everything. I mean, a pry bar, um, pulling things out, um, scraping things, you know, whatever you can imagine, a screwdriver, this thing works for everything. And I don't just use it for flooring, I use this around the house. This is something that costs like five bucks, and it might even be less than that. You can find this in the carpet aisle at Home Depot, um, or I'll have a link below that you can order one of these on Amazon. This thing is absolutely incredible. If you don't have something like this, you believe me if you buy one you're going to be telling me joe you were right i didn't believe it but this tool i use for everything it's an absolutely awesome tool to have it's just a linoleum knife and i like the roberts one just so you know it's really strong on the blade i've only broken a few of these i've had this one for a few years now you can see how worn out it is but great great tool, multi-purpose tool that to use for anything, really, anything. Okay, and then just one more thing here. I have this shark knife here. This is what I use. This one's older. I could have brought out a newer one because I do have one, but I brought out my old beat up one that I've been using for a few years now. Really easy to change blades on here. Store 10 different blades inside here. I just really like this stationary blade. I know a lot of people like the flip out ones, but when you're doing some serious cutting, you don't want to have a flip out retractable blade. You want to have something that's stationary. And this shark knife, it's not very expensive at all. Really nice knife. I like how easy it is to change the blades. Um, these little things in here that always seem to break on most utility knives and wear out where the little hook, where you know, where these notches, go into that little metal piece. That thing, it never wears out. And I'm, I beat on these knives, guys. So just so you know, that's called a shark knife. So just like anything, having the correct tool to do something really does help the process. It's no different with a vinyl plank. Like for example, if you're gonna hammer in a big nail, you don't wanna use a tiny little hammer, right? It's gonna be the same for installing vinyl plank. Now, I do wanna tell you, speaking of vinyl plank, because I get asked a lot, what is a good vinyl plank out there? There is a lot of good planks out there. One that I have found that is really, has really raised an eyebrow for me, guys. It's, it's Floret. Floret vinyl plank, they have, a, they have a high end and then they have one that's a little bit more of a value plank. I wouldn't even call it low end because even that plank has a 20 mil wear layer. Their vinyl plank is super durable, easy to install. And I just love how realistic their products look. Not a lot of patterns are repeat patterns that they have. They really do a nice job of designing this plank. I'll put a link where you can go to, where you're gonna go find all these tools at the link below in the description. I'll also have some things on that tools page where you can go and click on and check out some videos that I made on those to check out the reviews on those. I mean, it's just a really an amazing product. Check them out. I know you're not gonna be disappointed and I wouldn't recommend them if they weren't worth something. So I do promote these tools. No one out of all these tools, they're not paying me to bring these up to you. These are just tools that I use every day, guys. Now, if you do use my link, I will get paid for it. And I just wanna tell you, I really do appreciate it if you decide to use it. If not, still, go look for these tools and get some of these. You don't need to get all of them, 
but I for sure get the tapping block and the pull bar and the rest of these really do help too. That's why I shared these. There's probably a hundred more tools I could show you, but these are the ones that are really the meat and potatoes. So I'd check these out. Now I have a bunch more videos on my site that you can go and check out installation videos. If you're doing a plank installation, I do have one that I'll link below that I think is a really good one for you to watch. If you haven't seen any vinyl plank videos, or if you have check this one out, I'll bring you through the layout to the very end. It's a shorter video. I really share a lot of really easy to use methods. So check that link out below in the description of this video. And I also just want to pray for you that God blesses you and your family. I pray that he showers you with his grace. And I pray for that in Jesus' name. Now, if you don't know who he is, he knows you and he wants to know you. So go check him out, would you? Thank you again for watching my videos. I'm Joe Latender. Thanks for watching.